In this video, we're going to go through two examples of solving Hess's law problems. In a Hess's law problem, you're asked to calculate the change in enthalpy delta H for a particular chemical reaction. And you're going to do this using different chemical equations with their own delta H values. The idea here is that if we can take these provided chemical reactions and their delta H values and add them up, just like mathematically add them up to give us this overall equation, then we will also be able to add up the delta H values in the same way and give us the delta H for this particular reaction. It's kind of hard to explain. It's a lot easier to understand as we go through the process. When you're solving a Hess's law problem, you should really focus on the target or the goal chemical reaction. I like to just work from left to right, starting with the reactants and working my way to the products. The first reactant in this equation is carbon graphite. And carbon graphite is featured right here in this very first equation. I'm gonna number these equations, one, two, and three. So we know that in our target overall equation, we want to have two moles of carbon graphite on the left-hand side or the reactant side. Our equation number one has carbon graphite on the left-hand side, the reactant side, but only one mole in this particular equation. So what we're going to do is take equation number one and we're gonna multiply it by two so that we have the correct number of carbon graphite. I'm just gonna abbreviate that. We're gonna multiply all of the stoichiometric coefficients by two um, as we go across this equation. And we need, to, we need to do that so that the equation stays balanced. But really our, our only thing that we're really concerned about here is getting the correct amount of carbon graphite. Since we've multiplied every single term in this equation by two, every single coefficient by two, we have to do the exact same thing to the delta H value as well. If we are reacting twice as much of these molecules, we're going to be giving off twice as much heat. So whatever we do to the stoichiometric coefficients, we're gonna do the same thing to the value of delta H. Now we're gonna move on to our next term in this equation. The next thing we see here is three H2 gas on the reactant side. In equation number two, we have H2 gas. It's on the reactant side, so it's in the right spot. But again, the coefficient is incorrect. We only have one in this equation, and what we actually need is three. So what we're going to do again is take all of the terms in equation number two and we'll multiply them this time by three. Again, because we want to have three of these hydrogen gas molecules. So we've got our three H2, I'm going to highlight that. And we have three times one half, so that's three halves O2 gas and three H2O liquid. And again, whatever we're doing to the stoichiometric coefficients in this equation, we're gonna do the exact same thing over here to delta H. So this is three times negative 285.8 kilojoules per mole. And again, this is because if we're reacting three times the amount of molecules, we're gonna be giving off three times the amount of heat. The last term in this equation that we're looking at is the C2H6 gas, which is over on the product side. Equation number two has C2H6 gas. It's on the reactant side, not on the product side, so we're gonna have to fix that. Also, the stoichiometric coefficient is not correct. We want one, but we have two. So in this particular situation, we're going to need to divide all of our stoichiometric coefficients by two in order to get the coefficient of C2H6 to match up. In addition to that, we need to reverse this whole entire equation because we need C2H6 to be on the product side, not the reactant side. So we're gonna move all of our products over to the left-hand side and we're gonna move all of our reactants over to the right-hand side. So there's a lot of stuff that's gonna go on here. So I'm gonna start by writing the products over on the left-hand side. We're making them reactants. And don't forget that we're dividing everything by two. Four divided by two gives us two CO2 gas molecules. 6 divided by 2 gives us 3 H2O liquid molecules. And now we're going to take all of our reactants and we're going to put them over here on the product side. 2 divided by 2 gives us our 1 C2H6 gas, which is what we want. And 7 divided by 2 is 7 divided by 2 O2 molecules gas. So in terms of our delta H, we divided everything by two, which means that we also need to divide our delta H value by two. Remember though that we also turned this equation around. So we put all of our products over on the left-hand side and vice versa. When we turn everything around in a chemical equation, we reverse the sign of delta H. So this, instead of being negative 3,119, it's gonna be positive 3,119. 
and let me highlight the C2H6. Now just to check our work, we should be able to add all three of these equations together, just like a math problem, to give us this overall desired equation. But before we start adding stuff up, I'm going to take a look at what we can cancel. So for example, in the second equation, we have 3H2O on the right and we have 3H2O on the left, so that's going to cancel. And we also have two CO2 molecules on both sides. And then last but not least, we have 2 plus 3 halves, which is 7 halves, and 7 halves O2. So when we add all of these up, we are going to get our desired equation, 2 carbon graphite plus 3 H2 gas, which makes C2 H6 gas. And then over here, the last thing that we're going to do is add up all of these delta H values. We want to make sure that we're paying attention to the signs. So we're going to start with 2 times negative 393.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5. And then to that, we are going to add 3 times negative 285.8. And to that, we are going to add... 0.5 or one half of 3119.6. This gives us an overall delta H value, if I did my math correctly, of negative 84.6 kilojoules per mole. Let's take a look at our second example here. This is a very similar problem. We have three equations again, and we're just looking for um, how to calculate the overall delta H. Now this one I'm gonna approach a little bit differently. It's gonna be a little bit less writing and maybe a little bit faster of a process. So we can see that we have carbon graphite that we want to have in this equation. And carbon graphite is um, in, on the left-hand side with a coefficient of one in our target equation. And in equation number one here, it's also on the left-hand side with a coefficient of one. So that means that carbon graphite is in the correct spot with the correct amount. So this particular delta H value, we're just gonna leave it alone. I'm gonna write a times one over here. I know that that means I've thought about this equation. I don't need to change the stoichiometry. I don't need to change the sign. Um, I'm just going to use this equation as is. The next molecule that we have here is 2H2, and H2 is featured in this equation right here. We have it on the correct side, but not in the correct amount. So we need to change the stoichiometry in this equation by multiplying everything by 2. I'm just going to kind of squeeze that in. And over here for the delta H value, we need to multiply this delta H value by 2 as well. The next term we have in this equation is 1 half O2. This one is a little bit tricky because we have O2 right here and then we also have O2 in equation number two as well. Because it's in both of these equations right here, my um, tendency in this situation is to kind of avoid dealing with O2 and have faith that it's gonna work itself out in the end. So the last term that we're looking at is the C2, CH3OH which is in the correct amount, but on the wrong side of the equation. So that means that for my delta H value over here, I want to keep the stoichiometry as one, but I want to change the sign from negative to positive. And I've got to kind of think in my head that this equation is being reversed. Because this equation is being reversed, I am going to, underneath it, just kind of make a note of the equation written in the direction that I want it to be written. And I'm not really worrying about the signs uh, or the states here, solid versus liquid versus gas, because I'm just making a note down on the bottom of the direction that this equation is actually gonna proceed. So then I am going to just kind of quickly take a look at how does this equation work out in terms of cancellation, because don't forget, we've kind of ignored this O2. Hopefully it will like work itself out as we go. Um, also, I'm going to highlight this CH3OH, and I'm going to kind of draw a thin line through that so that we ignore it. Um, so our CO2, we can cancel that out um, from equations 1 and 3. Our two H2O molecules, we can cancel those out from equations 2 and 3. And then in terms of the O2, we have a total of 1 plus 1 on the left, so that's a total of 2, and we have three halves over here on the right. So we can cancel out three halves and we can cancel out one and we can cancel out one half of another one. And that is going to give us the correct amount of O2. So like I said, usually they just kind of work themselves out. And all that we have left to do is just add up these delta H values, negative 393.5 plus negative 285.8 times two 
plus 726.4. And if I've entered this into my calculator correctly, we get an overall delta H value of negative 238.7 kilojoules per mole.